Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, I'm going to be telling you guys about 50 vehicles that have been removed from Grand Theft Auto 5. So these are going to be cars and vehicles that have been removed from the game, either entirely or with some traces left over. And a lot of these cars are really awesome and ones that I would love to hopefully see Rockstar add into the game in the future. All right, so the first vehicle we're gonna be looking at today is the Admiral. Now, the horn sounds of the Admiral can actually be found in the iFruit files. The Admiral is a four-door executive sedan last featured in Grand Theft Auto 4. And in Grand Theft Auto 4, it was manufactured by Dundreary. So I'm assuming it would be the Dundreary Admiral. Uh, again, I would have liked to seen this vehicle in the game. It's a sedan. We don't have a ton of those. That's our first vehicle today. The second vehicle is the Combine Harvester from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now, it was supposed to make a return, but it was cut for unknown reasons. A photo of this can actually be found in the in-game files, and it assumed the same GTA San Andreas appearance, albeit with an overall green body. So a photo of it and police scanner audios are still available in the files. The next vehicle day is the Esperanto. The horn sounds of the Esperanto can be found in the iFruit files, and it implies an appearance of a civilian Esperanto along with the police variant featured in the prologue. So the Esperanto is a four-door sedan last featured in Grand Theft Auto 4 produced by Albany. This would have been really cool as well. I loved driving this vehicle around in Liberty City, and it was cool that we got that police variant in uh, the prologue but we never got to experience that in GTA 5. So that would have been a really great vehicle. The next one is the Ferrochi. So the horn sounds of the Ferrochi can be found in the iFruit files and police scanner audio files and interior textures also exist in the game. So the Bravado Ferrochi is a, another four door sedan last featured in Grand Theft Auto 4. This is a really cool car as well. And I know a lot of people would love to see this featured uh, into the game. Uh, it's produced by Bravado which indicates that it's some sort of Dodge vehicle. Uh, either way, it's a really cool car, and I definitely like to see it in the game. After that, we have the Locust. The horn sounds of the Locust can be found in the iFruit file apps. The Emperor Locust is also a four-door sedan, last featured in GTA 4. We don't have a lot of Emperor vehicles in the game, like the RE7B, etc. So it would be cool to see a car like this get featured in Grand Theft Auto 5. That's the Locust. After that, it's the Marbell. So the Willard Marbell is a four-door sedan from GTA 4 that was meant to return, but was cut. Only its handling files and police scanner audio remain in the game. So you guys can see the Marbell right here. Uh, it's a pretty cool car, four-door sedan, uh, manufactured by Willard, which we don't have a lot of Willard vehicles in the game. It's sort of like an old-school vehicle. I think this one would be cool if it got a, a Benny's upgrade if it was ever added into the game. So that is the Willard Marbell, another car that was supposed to be in GTA 5. After that, we have the Squatty. The Squatty is a military variant of the Patriot, and it's similar to the Patriot from GTA Chinatown Wars and can be seen on the Warstock Cash and Carry advertisement however it's not seen anywhere in gta 5 which means that it was deleted quite early on now a possible replacement for this vehicle is the crusader but this one definitely is a more like intense military vehicle not just like a jeep so this would have been an awesome vehicle to have into the game and what's funny is you can still see it featured on that same war stock cash and carry site today even though that vehicle doesn't exist at all. The next vehicle that was cut is the Police Fugitive. So the Fugitive is in Grand Theft Auto V, but a police variant of it is not. Uh, on the Southern San Andreas Super Autos website, it states the Fugitive is the go-to cruiser for law enforcement and those who want to pretend they are law enforcement. So it's likely the Interceptor is the replacement of this, because police scanner audio files speaks in the dispatcher voice saying police fugitive. So it looks like there was supposed to be a police car version of the fugitive, but it looks like it was cut from the game. 
and light textures of the fugitive also containing police lights further proves it was going to be a police car. After that, we have the Presidente. So the horn files can be found in the iFruit app for the Presidente. This is another vehicle featured in Grand Theft Auto 4. It's a four-door sedan from Albany. My favorite version of this car in GTA 4 is the Police Stinger variant of the Presidente. It's just a really cool vehicle. So seeing this in online would just be awesome. Up next, we have the Uranus. So the Uranus handling files can be found in game and a wrecked version can be found in rural areas as well. We've talked about the Uranus too. The Uranus is a two-door hatchback, last featured in Grand Theft Auto 4, and this would be a really cool like tuner vehicle. So if we were to ever, ever get like a Tuners and Outlaws style update, I feel like this would be a great car in which Rockstar could add into the game. The next vehicle is called the Winky. Now the Winky is an unknown cut car. The only thing that remains are its handling files. Now, we can assume the Winky would be a small car according to its name. There's no pictures featured of the vehicle itself. Moving on, our next vehicle is the Shafter. Now, I know what you guys are saying right now. We already have a Shafter in the game. Well, this was supposed to be the Grand Theft Auto 4 version. It was going to coexist side by side. The Shafter we see in GTA 5 is a second generation one. The first gen one was featured in GTA 4 and it is very different and I'm assuming it would have different customization options, different performance, etc. So that would be a vehicle that would go along with it. Also, the Felzer. We already have the Felzer in game, but like Grand Theft Auto 4, the Felzer is generation 1 and it is a convertible where the one in GTA 5 is not a convertible. So you can see the differences already. Uh, so those two vehicles would have been really cool to coexist together. Unfortunately, both those variations were cut. Our next vehicle is a non-snowy variant of the Bobcat Security Stockade. So Bobcat Security uh, has a stockade, but it only has snow on it. Uh, there was supposed to be a non-snow version that we would see around Los Santos. That never made its way into the game. Our next vehicle is the Trawler. So the Trawler is an unknown fishing boat. Its engine, horn, and police audio scanner files are found into the game. So unfortunately, there's no picture for this, but that still sounds like a pretty cool boat. Sounds a little bit slow, though, because it's a fishing boat. After that, we have the Hell Fury. So this would be the Hell Fury from Grand Theft Auto 4. It was supposed to make a return, but it was cut. Police scanner audio files and horns can be found in the game. I'm surprised this did not come in the biker's update, but it never did. After that, we have the Bobcat. Do not confuse this with the Bobcat XL. This is the shorter GTA 4 variant. It was meant to appear in the game. Police scanner audio files are still found for this vehicle. And this is a really cool car. I would have loved to see this. It's a two-door pickup truck. It would have been awesome to go alongside the Bobcat XL. Uh, unfortunately, it was cut from the game. A couple of vehicles that we don't have photos on, the TR3. Nothing is known about this vehicle, but police scanner audios are left in the game. Also, the Trial. Now, not much is known about this car either, but it's safe to assume it's a trial bike. Police scanner audio files are left in the game. And then the SXR. Nothing is known about this vehicle, but audio files for it are left in the game. After that, we have the RC Bandito. So I'm assuming this is going to be similar to the Bandito from GTA San Andreas, which is a single occupant sand rail car. Um, it also kind of sounds like there might have been an RC variant to this as well. So that would have been pretty cool, especially if we had like the track opened up or the indoor Maze Bank Arena. That'd be pretty sweet also. After that, we have the Wayfair. So the Wayfair is a motorcycle. It's a chopper that was last featured in The Lost and the Damned. Again, I thought we were going to see this in the Bikers update, but it was never added into the game. Only police scanner audio files are found. After that, we have the cart. The cart from GTA San Andreas was supposed to make a return. This would have been really cool. Uh, it literally is like a go-kart, like you would drive at an amusement park. Uh, police scanner audio files are found for this. Also, another version of a monster truck can be found. This is not the Liberator. It's a monster truck version of the Rancher that can actually be seen on a poster in the Yellow Jack Inn. So it would be pretty nice if Rockstar added another monster truck in the game. That would have been pretty cool. After that, the next one is an unnamed SUV that can actually be found in Simeon's office. It has similar features to the Chevy HHR, but was never added into the game. After that, the Vortex from GTA San Andreas. There's audio files for an airboat slash airfan. 
their police scanner referencing its vehicles. And the likely reason for its removal is it primarily would have been used in swamp-like areas, and its full potential would have really only been used near Lago Zancudo, which is not a whole lot of area to use a vehicle like that. The next vehicle is the Hydrofoil. Nothing is known about this vehicle, but there are police scanner audio referencing its vehicle category. The Skateboard was the next vehicle cut from GTA 5. There was police scanner audio files for that which of course would have been really cool to be able to utilize. It also is probably why we have those skate parks in game, uh, but never have the option to use it. After that, it's the Saber. So do not get this confused with the Saber in GTA 5. This is the Saber from GTA 4, which is completely different. It's a two-door muscle car. Its design, its shape, I'm assuming its modifications and upgrades would be completely different as well. So this is another vehicle that I'd really like to see Rockstar add into the game. That one would be super cool. The next vehicle after that is the EOD, which is a military vehicle intended for explosive ordnance disposals. Now, this vehicle is unknown. We don't have any photos, but police scanner files remain. Following that, we have the Hakumi, which is a sedan from GTA 4. It's a four-door sedan. Um, it's made by Dinka. Again, this would be another great like Tuners and Outlaws car. Uh, police scanner audio files remain for this, and its horn can be seen inside the iFruit files. Believe it or not, a motorized skateboard was cut from the game and roller skates. Both police scanner files can be found in the in-game files. Another thing, I guess you would consider this a vehicle, horses. So horses were supposed to be rideable, but they were cut from the game. Police scanner audio shows that this was the case, that you could ride the horses in game, which would have been really cool. Following that, we have a police version of the buzzard. So we have police mavericks in the game, but livery texture data can actually be seen for a police variant of the buzzard, which would be pretty awesome. I'd love to see police versions of that. After that, we have the Super GT. This is the version from Grand Theft Auto 4. Do not get this confused with the Rapid GT. They are completely different cars. It's a two-door sports car. Uh, it was featured in GTA 4. Again, this is an awesome vehicle. It was manufactured by Debache. Its interior and horn files can be found inside the iFruit app, although its interior was used by other vehicles. Our next vehicle is the Freeway, which is a civilian motorcycle featured in Grand Theft Auto 4. Again, I'm not sure why this never was added in the Bikers update. It would have been a perfect time to add something like that. Uh, another really cool bike. The Freeway was found inside the iFruit app. After that, you have the Chavos, the horn of the Chavos can be found in the iFruit app. It is a four-door sedan made by Dinka. This is featured in GTA 4. After that, you have the DF890, which can also be found in the iFruit files. This is a very unique looking four-door sedan. This would be such a cool car to have in GTA 5, knowing what Rockstar could do. It was made by Impante. We don't have a ton of Impante vehicles, so this would be a great car. The next one is the Privian. Its horn can be found in the iFruit app again. This is a two-door coupe that was featured in GTA San Andreas. So again, this would be pretty awesome. It's based off of a Nissan vehicle, which we don't have a lot of in game, so that would be kind of awesome. After that, we have the Majestic. The Majestic is another car from GTA San Andreas. It's a two-door coupe. It's a 1980s car based off of a Buick Regal. So that would be definitely unique to see in the game. After that, we have the Merit. The Merit can also be found in the iFruit files. It's a four-door sedan from Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh, it was actually manufactured by De Classe. And if you watched my video earlier, it's also one of the wrecks that can be found in game as well. After that, we have Mr. Tasty. Mr. Tasty is an ice cream truck. That was one of my favorite vehicles from GTA 4, Mr. Tasty. And we don't have that in GTA 5, which is so disappointing. I loved like the, the crazy horn sound it could make. God, I want this vehicle to return so bad. That would be amazing. Following that, we have the Pinnacle. The Pinnacle is a four-door sedan in GTA 4 made by Anis. Again, we don't have a ton of Anis vehicles, so this would be a great option to have in the game. Following that, the PMP 600, which is a luxury four-door sedan. You guys know all about the PMP 400 by Shyster. I've said this would be an amazing vehicle to see in a future online update. After that, we have the Rebella. Its horn can also be found in the iFruit apps. This is the weirdest looking car ever. It's a mid-size crossover SUV in GTA 4 by Ubermach. Just the weirdest looking vehicle ever. 
but I guess it would be kind of interesting to have in the game. Following that, we have the Solaire, which is a four-door station wagon made by Willard. This would certainly be a very interesting car if Rockstar decided to add this into the game. Uh, again, one of the more unique looking vehicles we've seen so far. After that, we have the Steed, which is a box truck. This isn't really all that exciting, but it is a vehicle that was cut from Grand Theft Auto V. Another large commercial truck, the Yankee, was cut from Grand Theft Auto V. Um, again, it's a basically a box truck, flatbed style truck. Uh, we have plenty of those, but that version that was specifically in Grand Theft Auto 4 was cut from the game and never made its way to GTA 5. Moving on, the next vehicle we're looking at is the Scamp. The only remnants of this vehicle are handling files, which can be found in the game's internal files. And it is a small aircraft similar to the Duster, the Mammotist, etc. And although it's unconfirmed, it's quite possible that the Scamp would have been the name for the unknown high-wing airplane that was found in the GTA 5 files as well, and it was cut from development. I'll, I'll show a photo of that on the screen right now. That's likely what the scamp was supposed to be. After that, we've got the Beagle. So the Beagle is an airplane featured in GTA San Andreas. It's a twin engine turbo prop airplane. This one would have been pretty cool. Now, I'm not the best with airplanes, so maybe this has been replaced by another vehicle, but the Beagle was actually mentioned in the mission Pac-Man, where Trevor tells Lamar he used to borrow a Beagle when he was young, to which Lamar replies, kids with planes. So that would have been pretty cool. After that, we have this unknown skull motorcycle. It can be found in some of the manuals in the office of Beaker's Garage in Polito Bay. It seems to be a modified Hexer, and is represented similarly to the Sanctus, which is a vehicle we got in game. And our final vehicle we're gonna be looking at today is the Reefer, which is a civilian shipping fishing vessel featured in Grand Theft Auto 4. This boat is like really unique. It has like a diving board on the front. It's, it's just a really fun vehicle. So that would have been really awesome to see in GTA 5. Anyways, that's all the vehicles that I'm gonna be looking at for you guys in this video today. There's a couple more that I didn't cover in this video because either not a whole lot was known about them or there wasn't really a photo of it. I will leave a link to the page I'm using in the description. So if you wanna check this out for yourself, you can. I feel like this is really interesting, the amount of vehicles that weren't featured that Rockstar had plans for, which I just think is crazy. So let me know in the comments down below which one of these vehicles would you like to see the most added into the game. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.